So what is this law of nature? The law of nature is the, 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 the recognition of the fact that innately we have life, liberty, and then implicitly as a result of this, these natural powers, property. So what is this government for? It's for the implementation and the protection of the law of nature, of the order of the world, of what we are as human beings because we are human beings. Meaning what? Protection of life, protection of what? Liberties, and protection of property. Very middle class uh, philosophy, isn't it? Many accuse uh, Locke of uh, being uh, just a middle class bourgeois. <coughs> so, <laughs> does it or doesn't it look familiar? Yeah? Think Declaration of Independence, think on Constitution. So life, liberty, and property, all of which are needed for pursuit of happiness, right? Well, it, it's implicit, it doesn't say. It, but you know, the declaration is more of a development. So life, liberty, and property is the mission of the government. You remember that in Hobbes, the Leviathan, the government, no matter how many people it had, was not bound by anything. As long as it maintained, it does, it did have to maintain, in general, the survival of the of the whole life, right? But you know, not of necessarily of every single particular individual, right? This is much more complex because innately we have all these. So government will be is limited because it's limited by the law of nature, and it will only remain a legitimate government as long as it obeys its mission. The reason why we gave up is our powers is for the government, for, for us to have an entity to protect things that we could not perfectly protect in the state of nature. That's why we left the state of nature in love. Uh, in as much as this government, one, two, many, I don't know how many there are in government, does this, it's legitimate. When it stops doing this, it becomes illegitimate. So this is why it's a limited government and sort of under the sovereignty of the people. All of these sound very familiar already, I hope. <coughs> for good or worse. For better or worse. So, life, liberty and property, as long as the government protects them, it does its job, when not, it can be removed. So you see why now Locke and Hobbes and Locke are such important transitions to the assumptions of the system within which we live, which is called liberal democracy. Again, not in the sense in which it's used in American politics. Liberal democracy. This is the world, this is the normality, quote unquote, that we assume today. And we're trying to, you know, enforce around the world or whatever. Is this the only way to live? Is this the right way to live? How about the common good? How about other things? No, this, these are specific assumptions. Very specific assumptions, right? Are these the right assumptions? You know, just because we live within them, just because we accepted them without knowing what we have accepted, are these the right assumptions? I'm not pointing out that there aren't, or that they aren't, or that they are. The point is, this is what political philosophy does. It examines these assumptions. It goes into the deep questions and asks again, what is a human being? What is the best life? Right? What is society? And in conclusion, how should society be ordered? The next um, video lecture will be on the rise of what we today know as the state, that you know, called countries, right? The system of modern centralized uh, nation states. <coughs>